Hello everybody, I am Sam from Gamelin Games, and I am here today to do a solo playthrough of Tiny Epic Dungeons. Now, something I will note about solo play, Tiny Epic Dungeons is a cooperative game, so the solo play is actually a two-player game where you control both heroes. Now, alternatively, you could control three or four heroes. Totally fine, it's just a little bit more to manage, but if you're up for that challenge, then by all means, go for it. Today I am playing Uliessa, the Dwarf Cleric, and Thordin Firebraid, the Dwarf Fighter. So without further ado, let's get into it. Game is set up, decks are shuffled, and I am ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and we'll have uh, Uliessa start. So I'm going to have Uliessa come over here. All right. We've got a new room there. Nothing much happening in there. There's no traps, no enemies. It's just a room that you can take an action to pick some loot up out of the discard pile. So we'll keep going. All right, so now we have something to do here. So we have revealed a goblin, which means it surprised Uliessa, and she will take one damage. The goblin that we found is Boomy. Boomy shows up in that room. This room is actually very cool um, because the ability in it, once we clear it of goblins, is an intellect check beating a four, and you spend four focus to increase the torch track by two. So if I start to run out of time here close to the end and haven't uh, finished off a minion or killed a minion, um, that room could be pivotal for me winning the game. All right, but now that I am in there, um, first what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use Uliessa's free action which is research, so I'm going to spend four focus, and I'm going to draw a spell. All right, and I found Spirit Arrows. Spirit Arrows is a great spell because it allows me to target not just a single enemy, but also does an area attack everywhere that's one space away from me. So that is super good, especially for goblin control. Um, now, I did have to use four focus to go down, so I don't quite have the focus to cast spirit arrows unless I got a major rebate on my dice. I don't have a high confidence of that happening, so I'm going to use my hammer to attack the dwarf. I mean, the, <laughs> she's the dwarf to attack the goblin for my action. It is a strength based attack. I roll two dice. Uh, I need to get to a five because Boomy only has four defense. All right, that does it. So this is great. And this is actually to give you a strategic point why I chose to research first. So my six is going to make the check so I defeat the goblin and kill it. Um, and this plus two, because I'm not using it, I gain that focus back. So I'm actually getting three focus back. So if I had not researched first, that focus gain would have been moot because I'd be at full focus. So I chose to research first because I knew there was a possibility that if I rolled well, I could get some focus back, which is what happened. Fantastic. So I am going to take out Boomy. His reward is I get a spell or a loot. Where I have my research ability active and it's a free action, I'm going to go for a loot. And I found Hookshot. Okay, so Hookshot is great. Um, it's a very versatile weapon because you can do a melee attack at plus one or a ranged attack using agility at one space away for plus one to your agility. Um... I, I am going to put it on her because it is helpful for her for her melee attack. She's probably never going to use it for range because she only rolls a single die. But, uh, all right. And that is first turn. So Torch goes down. If there were any enemies on the board, they would activate, but there are not. So now it is Thornton's turn. Now, generally, as a, I don't want to split up my party, but I do kind of think that if I brought Thornton up here and then over, that I might be able to connect them because Thornton's not very fast, so I would only really get a single tile of exploration because I only have three speed, one, two, and then three. And if I found something where there's not much to do, it would kind of be a waste of turn. I don't want to have that happen. So I'm going to come up here. All right, well, no fear of a wasted turn. I have found a goblin. All right, put some new tiles down there. And the goblin that I found is another Boomy. So there are two Boomies in the goblin deck, and I've now found both of them. Thornton takes a damage. So I have two different ways that I could take care of Boomy. I could perform a normal melee attack with my hammer, or I could use my shield bash by spending all of my focus, five focus, to just take out that goblin right then and there. And if I did that, I would have an action left and I could just use that action to rest. I lost all of my speed, so I wouldn't be able to keep moving, 
But I'm going to do that because I think that's a good idea. So I'm going to spend all of my focus, five focus, just take out Boomy. Bada bing, bada boom. Boomy is gone. I will gain my loot as a reward. Found a Claw of the Panther. Ooh, so that's interesting because I do have two dice for my agility rolls. And so this would essentially be allowing me to make a melee attack with two dice plus one or three dice plus nothing if I didn't take it. Because I'd have to cover up my hammer unless I wanted to cover up my shield bash, which I don't know that I do. It's such a, a really good ability. Oh, ultimately, I probably won't go an agility based route with Thornton. So I'm going to toss the claw of the panther. But it's a tough decision. I may end up picking it up later on if uh, if I get some other stuff of the Panther. And then, because that was a free action on Thornton, I am going to use my full action to rest. So I'll gain one health back and five focus. And that is Thornton's turn. That goes down, and we are going to add a goblin to the entrance. That goblin is stabby. Okay. So now it is Uliessa's turn. Um... Uliessa could go take care of that goblin, which... So the goblins are definitely something you want to keep your eye on because they're not super hard to kill, but if you don't kill them and you just let them run rampant, they are going to cause serious issues. If Stabby were a ranged attack goblin, I'd probably go and take care of it right now, but as it stands, he won't be able to attack and move in the same turn, and he attacks those in the same space, so he'll go to someone... I'm going to I'm going to ignore him and I'll explore. Okay. Um yeah, let's do that. Okay. I found a trap. Luckily it's an intellect trap. So it's something that I should be able to disarm this turn. Uh, I need to beat a 5. I get to choose whatever skill I want. So I'm going to choose intellect cuz I get to roll 3 dice. All right. Oh, this is another situation. Holy cow. That is the best natural roll in the game. That's kind of insane. Because the six, you, where you can only use a single number, and then the plus twos give you the most focus um, and the most pluses. In this instance, I only have to use the six. I was only down one focus. Man, I should have... Uh, <laughs> I really should have researched. That's okay, though. Uh, so I did not get hit by the trap. I didn't trigger it. Now I am going to use my free action of research and draw a spell. Chain Lightning. Oh, so I found kind of another uh, multi-enemy spell in Chain Lightning. It doesn't give me an area, but it does give me two different enemies um, up to two spaces away each, which is very interesting. Uh, and then I'm going to actually try to disarm this trap. Uh, it's an intellect check. I need to get above a four. All right, I did it. So the five beats it, and then that two I don't use, so I get three focus back. All right, I'm having some really good rolls this game, so I hope that's an indication of how things are going to continue to go. I disarmed the trap, so I get to put that disarm token out. I get to draw a spell or a loot. Let's see what loot we get. Cloak of the Panther. <laughs> Remember that time that I drew the claw of the Panther just a second ago? Um, you know, I'm just going to have her hold on to it. The cloak is super useful because it allows me to ignore enemies anytime that I'm moving. Um, so I don't take that surprise attack damage. I probably would prefer to have it on Thornton where he's more likely to be just charging in recklessly, but I'm okay with her having it, and if she gets a better armor, she'll probably drop it. But she moved and took her action, so she is done. Torch goes down. It does trigger enemies. There's only one enemy on the board. It is Stabby, so Stabby looks. He will either move or hit everybody in his space. No one in his space, so he'll move. He has four movement. He'll move to the closest. If we were equidistant, we'd be able to choose, but Thornton is right there. So he moves in, does not attack. Now it is Thornton's turn. Cool thing about Thornton's turn is that where I haven't started my, um, where I'm starting my turn now, I can use Shield Bash, spending all of my focus, taking care of Stabby as a free action. His, Thornton's free action is really amazing with Shield Bash. Um, and I get a loot, a ruby figurine, not good for him because I max out my strength dice, but amazing for Uliessa because now she'll be just as strong of a melee fighter as Thornton, and she's already got that hook shot. So, wow, okay, that's good. Uliessa's definitely going to pick that up. 
Cool thing is now, Thornton still has his full turn. I have zero focus, so I have no ability to manipulate dice, but I have a full turn ahead of me. Uh, and let's go and see if I can link my two characters up. I can, and I will. I will do that. And it is going to be a goblin in there. We found, that's a minion deck. We found Shooty. Shooty's going to drop in. Thornton will take a damage from a surprise attack. Had I been wearing the cloak, I wouldn't have taken that damage. But that's what Uliesa has. So I will then go to attack that goblin and use my hammer, my base hammer, which is three strength dice with no pluses. All right, the six will do it because Shooty has five defense, and then I get three focus back from those dice. Great. And then I could either, either gain five focus or a loot. I'm going to choose a loot. Let's see what we get here. Ooh, throwing axe of the bear. Oh, see, now I'm torn because the bear set is definitely something I could see putting on Thornton long term if I can find some other pieces of the bear set because it's a great melee set. But it's the throwing axe, so it's kind of offhand. If I put it in place of my hammer, I no longer have a melee attack. I only have a ranged attack using my strength, which is not bad, but I do want to have a melee attack. But I also don't love the idea of covering up my shield bash. Okay, well, I'm going to hold on to the throwing axes. I can always throw away loot into the discard pile at any time. So if I run into a situation where it's like, listen, I need to use my shield bash... I can always toss the throwing axes later, but for now, I will hold on to them. So, that is my turn. Torch goes down. Okay, Uliessa. So now Uliessa's in the, in the spot that it would be very beneficial for her to go out and explore, because if she finds a minion, she's not going to take the massive amounts of damage that we normally take by two. Um, by, but two is really massive when you only have six hit points. Uh, so yeah, Uliessa is going to go and I'll probably come up here and explore. So one, two, and look at that. I found a minion. <laughs> um, do I want to have it go this way or that way? Probably best to have there. All right. Oh, I moved Thornton's figure though. Into there. The minion that we get is the skeleton. Ooh, we put a ritual token in that room. We get a health token there on the skeleton, and then we get to pull out the skeleton's token. Now, these were stretch goal tokens. These are samples from our manufacturers. They are awesome. Uh, super, super cool. So the skeleton is in there with Uliessa. So even though Uliessa... So she doesn't actually lose her speed because she's wearing the cloak, but she's in a great position. I do want to attack that skeleton, and it is relatively vulnerable to melee attacks with only a four defense. It does get extra defense if you are going to do a ranged attack against it. So I'm going to go ahead and use my hook shot. I don't have that ruby figurine yet, so I don't get to roll three dice. I only get to roll two. But let's see how this goes. Okay, so this roll was not fantastic. Um, one, two, three... And then the hookshot gives me a plus one for four. That's just matching the skeleton's armor. So that's not actually going to deal it any damage unless I were to spend some focus to increase those dice. Which I could do, but I don't love going down on focus. I like having her full up so I could cast one of these spells if it becomes necessary. So I'm actually not going to do that, which stinks, because I'm not going to deal any damage to it. And because it's not dead, I have to activate that die, which is one of the worst results, a five. And then we look at it's a melee attack, so it gets plus two on the counter, so it's attacking me back for seven. I have five defense, so I do take two. Okay, not great, but it is what it is. All right, and then that is the end of her turn. Track goes down, and a goblin comes out. It's going to come into the entrance, and let's see what goblin we have. It's Pokey. Pokey is the toughest goblin to kill with six defense, but it's got the really cool ability of you can reveal a rune tile and get a loot when you take down Pokey. All right, well, Thornton is not one to leave his companions alone with a skeleton, so he is going to charge in and say, let's do this. All right. Okay, so... 
Thornton also didn't have a fantastic role, but it's it's better than Uliessa's. Uh, it's basically that's Uliessa's role, but with a three. The three makes all the difference because the others are pluses. So that's three, four, five, six. I don't have any pluses yet because that throwing axe is a ranged attack. I didn't want to do that. Uh, so three, four, five, six. Currently, that's only dealing two damage to the skeleton. Um, however, and it's shield breaking me, so I don't even have to worry about my cool ability of stone stance, which gives me extra defense. Uh, but I am going to spend two focus to make that three a four so I can deal one additional damage. The reason I do that is because I see that at the end of our turn, it is going to deal two damage and four focus loss to each of us. With that in mind, I probably should have used Ulias's focus, but it's too late. Uh, it is what it is. And so then Thornton will take two damage um, as the counterattack because we basically ignore the defense and it gets plus two. All right. Uh, end of Thornton's turn, track or torch goes down and it activates enemies. We always go goblins first, one through four, and then minions. So Pokey will activate. Uh, Pokey will either move or hit everybody within one. There's nobody within one, so Pokey is going to move. And Pokey can move three. So Pokey will go one, two, three, and end up in that space. Which normally would be a bad thing, but where Uliessa has some spells that affect more than one unit. That may not be a terrible thing. Although the focus is going to be an issue. Because now the skeleton goes, and it will deal two direct damage to both Uliessa and to Thornton. Um, and will make each of them lose four focus. So Uliessa goes down to two. Thornton goes down to zero. And now it's Uliessa's turn. Uliessa only has one hit point and two focus. So I could cast Chain Lightning... I'd have to get a six, and I'd have to get a rebate of one to be able to afford the three focus cost. I think Spirit Arrows is probably a little bit out of my range to be able to do, um, because I'd need to get a rebate of three. But with Chain Lightning, I'm going to actually have her move first. So there, she is not in a straight line towards them, which she doesn't need to be in a straight line with Chain Lightning. But it also means that I don't have to roll the enemy die. So I can just cast the spell because they are not able to counterattack where they can't see me and they can only see in a straight line. So I'm going to cast Chain Lightning, hoping to get a one rebate. So I need to get up to a six and at least a rebate of one focus. Okay, so I did it because five plus one is six and then the two will give me a rebate of three. One, two, three. And then I cast Chain Lightning, cost me three to cast. One, two, three. And I can deal one damage uh, to up to two enemies, up to two spaces away. There happen to be two enemies, so I'm going to give one damage to the skeleton and one damage to Pokey. Pokey only has one damage. Spells ignore any armor, so Pokey is down. Now I get, as a reward for killing Pokey, I get a loot, which I'm going to pick up that ruby figurine that we talked about earlier. And uh, I get to reveal a room, which is very exciting. Um, hmm... It'd be really bad if I revealed a minion right next to Thornton. But I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> this situation where if I had teammates, oh my goodness, there it is! If I had teammates, they'd be so mad at me right now, but I just have to deal with my own problems. So I am the only one to blame. I mean, so it's like a double-edged sword. I mean, I don't have to take the immediate damage of the minion being there, uh, of revealing it, but I now have two minions on the board, which is a very scary thing because both of my people are very low health. Uh, I'm just at a, at a disadvantage for table space because I'm trying to keep everything as much in frame as I can. We get the ritual token, we get that, and we have the dungeon crawler has popped out. Okay. And it is... That was the end of Uliessa's turn. Okay, so Torch goes down. Luckily, nothing activates. So what Thornton, what I really want to do with Thornton is I want to kill the skeleton and get out of there. But to kill the skeleton, I have to get an 8. I don't have any pluses. And an 8 would do it. Can I get an 8 on 3 dice with no focus adjustments? Because if I don't, I could very well be down. Which would not be good. Well, life is nothing without risks. Try it. I could run away and rest, but I'm going to go for it. Come on, baby. Let's get an eight. 
Oh, there it is. Six, seven, eight, and I get a focus back. So that eight is going to be four defense, four, five, six, seven, eight. Woohoo! Killed the skeleton. Oh, that feels really good. So I took out the skeleton. So skeleton goes away. As a reward, anytime you kill a minion, you get six time back on the clock. One, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, I get two loot or two spells. Um, I'm going to draw from the top of the deck. I found Elven Chain and a Shield of the Lion. The Elven Chain is great because it gives me defense, but also speed, and Thornton's very slow. And now I have to make the decision, do I prefer the Shield of the Lion, which would give me more defense when I make a melee attack and give me the ability to reroll the enemy die and be part of the Lion set or the Throwing Axe of the Bear? Uh, this is rough. I Because if I put this here, then I also eliminate any melee attack which invalidates the shield. So I'm going to toss the shield. Depending on what other loot comes up throughout the game, I may go and pick it back up. Who knows? All right, so I have taken out the skeleton. That health token does get to shift over and go onto the dungeon boss mat. I need to just kill the dungeon crawler and then find the boss's lair, and then I can go into act two. But that's a, that's a lot easier said than done. I still have a long ways. So I just uh, took out that guy and now I can go, I can move and I definitely want to move away from the dungeon crawler because I don't want to take damage uh dungeon crawler can move two and will hit everybody within one so I need to move really three spaces away from it four spaces away from it okay so Thornton will go one two three four so I'm I should be safe from it moving and and hitting me okay End of Thornton's turn. Torch goes down and a goblin gets added. New goblin is Stabby, and Stabby goes right on the entrance. All right, so Uliessa is still in a spot. I don't remember where that health token was. It's right in between. I mean, I guess it's two, but if I was wrong and you guys watching on camera pointed out, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cheat. Okay, um, Uliessa could do a couple of different things, but... I am going to also get out of the spider's way. I'm going to come down here and take care of that goblin. I have the ruby figurine now, so I'm going to use the hook shot. Cool thing about killing Stabby. Oh, that six will do it. I get three focus back. One, two, three. Cool thing about killing Stabby is I can get a loot or health. So in this instance where I'm so low on health and we've got that dungeon crawler out already, I'm going to take the health uh, and get one, two, three health back. So now she's at five health and five focus. She's not in a bad spot. And we got rid of a goblin. So all around, positivity. Okay, that is the end of Uliessa's turn. Go down. Enemies activate. There's no goblins, but the dungeon crawler's there. Um, and Uliessa's closest. It will move two spaces. It only used known routes, so it will move there. And it does damage to everybody within one. There's nobody within one. So it is now Thornton's turn. So Thornton risks a certain amount by going after. Actually, where the Dungeon Crawler doesn't have any bonuses against a ranged attack, Thornton would be better off using his throwing axes because he gets the plus one. And if I go down, worst case scenario, I mean, I don't want to actually postulate on worst case scenario because there could be a lot of bad things that could happen. Um, but uh, Uliessa could go and possibly save him. All right, so I'm going to have Thornton move up here, and I'm going to use my throwing axes of the bear, and I'm going to do a ranged attack against Dungeon Crawler. In fact, the Dungeon Crawler gets less counterattack against a ranged attack. Let's do it. Oh, okay. Almost, almost really good. Uh, not quite, though. The six, I don't, I only have one focus, so I can't even turn that three to a two. So six will be there by itself, plus the one. So seven has five defense, so it takes two damage. Unfortunately, it rolled the shield breaker, so all of my great defense doesn't matter. It gets plus two, which means Thornton becomes KO'd. Oh, I am knocked unconscious. That is no fun. That was some bad luck there uh, with how that turned out. Cool. All right, well, that concludes Thornton's turn.
So that goes down. Luckily, nothing happens. Um, and it is Uliessa's turn. So in order to take out the dungeon crawler, Uliessa would have to deal five damage, which if she did her melee attack, she'd have to roll a 10. Now that is a really tough... That In natural rolls, that is the best possible roll. That's a six, a plus two, and a plus two. I do have plus one on my hook shot. Um, but it's likely I'm going to get counterattacked pretty hard. But if I move into the space, I will prevent the dungeon crawler from moving, which would allow Thornton to rest on his next turn and stand back up. Oh, or I could attack from right here and not risk my health at all and still deal two damage to it, which is appealing. I like the idea of dealing two damage to it. Nope. I'm going to move in. I have, the cap I have the possibility of dealing far more damage with a melee attack. I doubt I'm going to kill it, uh, but at least I have a better chance of dealing more damage. And I don't like being in the entrance because the goblins spawn there, and there's a goblin spawning at the end of my turn. Okay. Uh, not the greatest roll, but not a bad one, really. Uh, that's six, seven, and then eight. I could do... Two focus to make that a plus two. So six, seven, eight, nine. I needed a ten. <laughs> oh, if that weren't a six and it were closer to me to focus it down, I might have been able to actually one shot it, but alas, I could not. So six, seven, eight, nine, five. It will take four damage. One, two, three, four. Leaving it alive at one health. It counterattacks me with three plus three is six. Uh, I have five defense, so I do take one damage. Oh, dang, because I can't, I can't use focus to turn a die that's a 6 into a 7 or anything like that, or a 6 into a 1. Uh, it doesn't quite work like that. It doesn't loop around. Um, overall, though, that was a huge hit. It was just so close to a uh, death that I wanted it to be that way. But it wasn't, so uh, torch goes down. A goblin gets added. Ooh, we've already seen six goblins, so I'll do a quick little shuffle on that deck. And we have Boomy popping into the entrance. It's now Thornton's turn. He has to rest. Luckily, he is uh, in a room without an enemy, so he can rest. So that's the first thing I have to do in my turn. Three health, five focus, pops up. Um, at the end of my turn, the dungeon crawler is going to activate and will deal two damage to me, so I really don't want to stay there. I can't attack on my turn because my action was to rest. <sighs> And here's our situation where if I ditched my throwing axe, I could go in and kill Boomy and get my throwing axe right back, but just be at zero focus. Uh, kind of a push and a pull. I'm going to do it, you know, because the I can do that because the shield bash is a free action. So I walk in here. I'm going to throw away my throwing axe, and I'm going to use my free action of shield bash to kill Boomy. Boomy goes away. Uh, I can get a loot or a spell. So I could pick up anything from the discard pile. These are kind of auxiliary items that are really good, but I want other items from the sets first. So I'm actually going to draw a new loot. And I drew a, spe a spiked buckler. I love this item. I cannot even tell you how much I love this item. It allows me to get plus one on melee attacks, plus one defense, and plus one to my roll. I love that item. I'm much happier with that than the other ones. Of course, that may change as we get other things, but these are non-set items that are just really good. Okay, so that is Thornton's turn. Now we go down. Dungeon Crawler is going to activate. We'll deal two damage and two focus to Uliessa. Uh, now it can move and do that, but where it's already in Uliessa's space, it won't move, and Thornton is two spaces away so he doesn't get hit. All right, Uliessa's turn. I feel confident that she's just going to kick some butt and beat this Dungeon Crawler. So she's going to roll her hook shot because I don't have any focus. It'd be kind of more of a sure thing if I did like chain lightning because um, it blasts through armor. But where I only need to get six, I feel confident I can do it. Whoo! I don't know why I felt so confident. I barely did it. <laughs> the four with the plus two is a six. I do get a single focus back from that three not having used it. Five, six will deal that last damage to the dungeon crawler is down, I take that health token, so now as soon as I find the lair, I can enter the lair and go into act two 
for the final boss fight. I get six time back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. So I found both of those minions pretty early, and I actually handled them quite well. Uh, that gives me a great start on the rest of the game. Now it's kind of me dealing with goblins as I search for that lair. Uh, I do have to search for a bit because I've got, I found those minions so early that I, I want to try and build out the lair so that I can get it close to those, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, dungeon crawler's gone. And I get to draw two loot. That's right. Uh, first, cursed dragon scale. Oh, that's good because it can help with her melee attacks and with her spells. It's minus one defense, but it's plus one to all those. Ooh, yeah, I'm going to take that over the cloak. Especially because the cloak is not as good now where the minions have been revealed. They are the big damage dealers in the dungeon, so... Oh, no! <laughs> and then the robes of the phoenix! <laughs> the spellcaster's robes! Oh! Why? Um, I mean, it's a great item. Uh, at the moment, I'm going to toss it. If I find other set stuff from the Phoenix set, I may get back to it. But having these, this plus to all my stuff is just too good right now. Okay, uh, that is the end of Uliessa's turn. Torch goes down. It would activate enemies. There are none. Uh, Thornton, I mean, I'm still in a tough spot, and I don't want to take too much damage, so I'm actually going to rest. One, two, three go up to five, and then I'll start kind of exploring the dungeon, see what we find. Let's go over here. Found a trap. That's exciting. So I got to deal with that trap. All right. Uh, uh oh, that's not a great roll. Um, if I do spend two focus, though, I can make that three down to a plus two, and then it becomes six, which beats the trap, and I get a single focus back. Um, I could keep moving and... Honestly, I'm going to. All right, I found that room, which doesn't do much. So now I've moved... Did I start here? Did I start in the entrance? I did start in the entrance. So one, two, I'll move over here for three. Oh, of course. The last room that I move into <laughs> has a goblin in it, uh, which I take one damage and I can't uh, attack it. I don't have enough focus to use my shield bash. Uh, it is boomy. Uh, so that ends Thornton's turn. Torch goes down. We add another goblin to the entrance, and it's pokey. Okay, so now it is Uliessa's turn. I can deal seven, right, to go and take out pokey? I'm going to do it. Okay, is going to come down here, and I will use my hook shot to attack pokey. Five, six seven from the uh hook shot so then i get three focus back one two three slow oh i actually didn't even need to use this because i have the cursed dragon scale so i actually have plus two so five six seven i get an additional two focus i'm now full up on focus that's amazing that see that cursed dragon scale is so good okay so i kill pokey i get a loot and i get a reveal um let's draw a new loot a sun hammer Oh, that's even in Uliessa's picture. It's so good because it's the plus one, which matches the hookshot she currently has. Plus, I get a focus every time that I attack, which is great because she has spells too. Uh, she is straight up battle mage right now, and I am loving it. Okay, uh, and I get a room reveal. I'll reveal right here. Well, that's a portal room, a dead end, and a goblin. And we get shooty right there. I'm glad we didn't run into it. Okay, uh, end of her turn. Enemies activate. Less fortunate for Thornton, because he's down there with all the goblins. Um, first, Boomy goes, and Boomy will deal him two damage, one times number of goblins, so he takes two. And then Shooty will go. He gets to move and deal damage to everybody within two. He will move to the closest hero, which is Thornton, which is lucky for Uliessa, because it makes him her out of range, and he deals one damage that's what I'm saying. These goblins, overall, they're not tough to kill, but just two of them on there and almost wiped out Thornton. Okay. Luckily, it is Thornton's turn. I'm going to attack Boomy with my hammer-spiked buckler combo. Okay. So I need to get to a five. That's three, four... Five will do it, and I get three focus back, so I get to fill up on my focus. I do kill Boomy, 
which will get me a loot. Let's see if we can get something good. A great staff of the Phoenix. Oh, man. See, this loot deck is just tempting me to go all out mage with Uliessa. But I've got such a good. I've got such a good thing going right now with my Cursed Dragon Scale and my Sunhammer. Ooh, I don't know. Uh, the uh, What I was hoping for happened here with Thornton where I filled up my focus bar because I my action is done, so I wouldn't actually be able to take another action, but it filled up my focus bar so I can spend all five of my focus to then kill Shooty, which would either get me a loot or five focus so I could fill back up on my focus. I am guessing that I'm going to be resting here pretty soon, though, so I am going to um, gain a loot. A Jade Figurine. Well, I've got some Panther stuff there, but that would require kind of a shift. It doesn't hurt me to hold on to it. Uh, there are dungeon bosses that could trash my loot, so I'm just going to hold on to it because it's an easy trash if that were to happen. I could still move... Uh, you know... What the heck? Let's move. Let's see what's going on. Move over here. Oh, good. I found another goblin. <laughs> And I take a damage. The goblin that I found is stabby. Stabby drops in, but I can't do anything about it, so I am done. Cool thing is, had I gained the five focus from Shooty, I'd then be able to spend it to take that guy out. Thornton Shield Bash is a really cool ability. Okay, his turn is over. Time goes down. Uliessa is up. Uliessa can move four, so I'll come in to the rescue and take out, uh, take out uh, Stabby. For Thornton. One, two, three, four. Let's roll. Whoa. Take this guy out. All right, so the four, five, six. We'll do it. I get to fill up on my focus. I'm all good there. Stabby is down. Uh, Ulias is going to take the health. One, two, three. I mean, I would love to get loot, but gaining health is just so good. All right, end of her turn. Torch goes down, add a goblin, another stabby right on the entrance. Okay, I need to find that lair. I'm running out of time. So Thornton, Thornton actually can't afford to find a goblin, so I have to rest. One, two, three. Otherwise, I risk going down. Um, I revealed that room. All right, I'm going to have to shift my character slightly. This dungeon is getting big. There and there. That is a trap, so let's deal with the trap. Okay, six is not enough to beat it. Uh, I need to get to a seven. I need to spend four focus to bring that four down. But I suppose I do it. I'm so low on health, I just can't afford to. So the four, two focus brings it to a three, two focus brings it to a two, which then allows me to succeed at the check. And... I guess I'll keep going. Let's see what's here. Dead end. Okay. Um, so that was one, two. I don't want to go through there and do the check again. I don't have any focus to to uh, manipulate any dice. So I'm going to have Uliessa go down and hopefully take care of that. Um, take care of that trap. So he's done. Oh, sorry. I forgot. To oh, Stabby's still alive. Stabby's up here. He activates. There's nobody... In his space, so he moves. He can move four. One, two, three, four. Oh, so he moves into Uliessa's space. I suppose Uliessa ought to take care of him. All right, Sunhammer. Six will do it. I'm already full up on focus. Don't need it. Takes care of it. Uh, let's draw a loot. Oh! Oh, the Great Axe of the Bear. Okay, that's really good. Putting that on Thornton. Uh... An attack plus two. Oh, Thornton wants that great axe very, very badly. He really wants that great axe. Okay, that's cool. Um, I could move. There's no sense in moving. Well, I guess I could move into the trap. Let's just do it. Let's move into the trap, and then I'll try to take care of it next turn if we're going to need to. I need to find this lair. I'm running out of time. Okay, uh, five, six, seven. That takes care of it. I am good. That will be the end of her turn moves down. All right, Thornton. Uh, oh, here is an action that I could take and s do a strength check to pull a loot out of the discard pile. I want that great axe very badly. I'm going to do that. 
Wow, that was a terrible roll. That was an absolutely... Sorry, that was a one. That was an absolutely horrible, horrible roll. Triple ones. Wow. Even if I rolled anything but triple ones, I would have succeeded. No, okay, that's not true. Two of them couldn't be a one. Wow, that's terrible. <laughs> okay, so I fail. Uh, I can still move, though. Um, hopefully I can get it some other way. Uh, I have to deal with this trap. Five, six. Oh, jeez, I can't even manipulate those dice. All right, I take two damage. Oh, I'm low on health again. Let's see what's here. All righty. One, two, and let's just keep going. Okay, there it is. That is the dungeon boss's lair. I have found it. Unfortunately, I am very far away from any of the ritual tokens. It's going to make my boss fight tough. Uh, but I do have a couple of turns left. That goes down. We add a goblin. Let's go into the entrance, though. So I do have a little bit of space left. We are nearing the end because I am ready to go into this dungeon lair. Goblin is going to be shooty, and we'll drop there on the entrance. Okay. Uliessa uh, is going to try to take care of this trap, because we are going to have to go through here, so I don't want to be worrying about that trap while we're doing that. So, uh, it's an intellect check. I need to get to a six. Six uh, plus one is seven. There we go. I'm already full up on focus, so I successfully disarmed the trap. I do get to draw a loot. Is there... Oh, I, that great... The Phoenix set looks so interesting. Longbow of the Panther. At this point, I'm far enough in the game. I'm not going to make a shift with anybody. I don't need that Longbow and agility-based attack. Technically, Thornton could use it because he rolls three... I mean, it'd be good for him. He rolls three dice, but... Eh, I really want that great axe instead. Okay. So, time goes down. Enemies activate, which is going to be shooting. So shooting moves two spaces. One, two. And he would fire everybody within two spaces, but there's nobody within two, so he is done. Thornton's turn. Uh, I really want that stinking great axe. Okay. One, two, three. I'm going to try this test again. I'm not going to roll so terribly like I did before. There we go. That five is going to do it. I actually get three focus back. One, two, three. And I'm going to pick up that great axe out of the discard pile. Oh, yeah. I feel good about where things are now. Um, okay. And that is Thornton's turn. Time goes down. Uliessa's turn. She's pretty full up. Um, I'm going to go take care of that goblin because I don't want it to be a nuisance once we go into the lair. We're running out of time, so Thornton's... Hold on. End of her turn, end of Thornton's turn, end of her next turn. Can she get there? She could portal there because there's a portal next door. Okay, I feel okay about that. She's going to kill Shooty. Six will do it. Feeling good. See, now that I'm fully decked out, the goblins really shouldn't be that big of an issue. Once again, it, it only becomes an issue if you totally ignore them, which you don't want to do. Warhorn of the Bear. Oh! So Thornton wants that because now that would give him two pieces of the bear set and he'd get an additional plus one on his melee attacks. So if he has an opportunity, he will try to get that. Um, but I, I, need to, I, want, I need to rest before I go into the dungeon boss is the unfortunate thing. Uh, time goes down, though. We add another goblin. Pokey will come into the entrance. Okay, so basically Thornton has one more turn before we go into the dungeon boss. I could spend it here and picking up that Warhorn, which probably long-term is good because it gives me that... Sometimes that one extra might mean the difference of a win and a loss against the dungeon boss, but uh, also resting is kind of huge considering I only have two hit points. But I want that Warhorn, so I'm going to do the Warhorn. All right, let's see if I can get it. Six! That'll do it, and I get to fill up on my focus bar. Warhorn, come to daddy. Okay. I still get to move, though. I'm going to go one, two, three, so I'm at least ready to descend into the lair. Time goes down. Enemies activate, so Pokey gets to move three. 
one, two, but it only uh, it will move or attack. So now it is Ulias's turn. I have to go into the dungeon boss's lair this turn, otherwise we will lose the game. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to spend two focus boop, boop, to pop right there, and then I will take the. Uh, it's free to move in. And let's see who we have. We have the Mind Flayer. Ooh, all right. So the good thing is he only needs one ritual token, and it's really far down, so I'm going to need to get into this dungeon, deal him a ton of damage, and pull him out just to finish him off in the dungeon. Um, okay, so he has two tokens there because that shows how much we need to do. So uh, that was a total of one movement, two movement, three movement. Uh, four is her max. She can move there, and let's do it. Let's attack. Um, I could cast a spell. I'll put the boss token on there. Oh, if I cast the spell, it, its counter is it heals two, and my ma my mo my most effective spell deals three, so that's, I don't think that's great. I'm going to... Unfortunately, the bonus in this space is plus one to an agility. I'm not doing an agility check, but let's just roll for the sun hammer. I do get one focus just for having that sun hammer. See how it goes. All right, six. Oh, why did I have to roll this? Oh, I forgot. Torch track flips over now to the dungeon boss side, over to the two player spot. All right, six. I'm going to spend four focus, one, two, three, four, to make that down to a plus two. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it has seven defense, so I deal three. One, two, three. And its counterattack would have done plus four, but instead it moves the torch down. And it has this ability. Everybody within two is moved back to the entrance. <laughs> oh, that mind flare is mean. And that's bad in this scenario because the entrance is so far away. Oh, crap. Oh, okay. Wow, and then it moves the torch down to there. Um, wow, that is incredibly bad in this scenario because I'm so far away. Crap, okay. Uh, and then the torch goes down. Uh, this ability does not affect Thordin because there's no like ranged line of sight or any abilities that can go into or out of the dungeon lair. So uh, this goes down at the end of Ulias's turn. We activate enemies, goblins go first. So Pokey actually will now go back up to see Uliessa, and the Mind Flayer will move out and will then deal one damage and two focus to Thornton. Oh, and it's Thornton's turn. Luckily, the Mind Flayer did not deal a ton of damage. Otherwise, I could have lost the game right there. If it did anything more than one, Thornton would be down. He'd start his turn alone in the room with the dungeon boss, and I would have lost the game. I got really lucky that that's the case. Whoo! But I still need to do a ton of damage, and I want to get those bonuses in the dungeon boss's lair. So I'm going to move in. One, two, three. But I'm going to need to rest. Four. I can move four because I have that elven chain. And I'm just going to rest alone down there in the dungeon lair. Uh, one, two, three. And pull up on focus. That's all going to be Thornton's turn. Time goes down. We add a goblin. So now Ulias is kind of goblin swarmed up there. She's got Stabby and Pokey. And she, of course, I spent all my focus. Uh, dungeon boss. Oh, but I can, if I get a rebate, which I feel confident I could do, I can cast Chain Lightning and take care of both of these. That's why I love the area spells, because goblins can really multiply fast late game. And having those area spells or multiple hits can be key. Uh, so I'm going to try to cast Chain Lightning. So I need to get a six and a rebate of at least one. Oh, that was not the roll. That was not the roll. And that was even worse. Oh my goodness. Holy cow. I'm just still trying to process what just happened. Two, four, five, six is enough to to succeed but I don't have the focus to cast it and so each of the enemies use this die to attack me back with 
So that's actually going to decrease the torch track two spaces. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I may have just lost. But we'll play this out and see. So first enemy moves the torch track down. We activate these enemies. Pokey does one damage per number of goblins, which is two, directly to Uliessa. Then Stabby deals one damage times the number of goblins, plus one, so three. That knocks down Uliessa. Then the other one moves the torch track down. Pokey, now with Uliessa down, they ignore her, so we'll move three away. One, two, three, coming towards Thornton. Stabby will move four. Oh, whoops, wrong ones. One, two, three, four. Oh, and each of these also was hitting this guy. He would have moved in back into the dungeon lair, hit for one damage and two focus, and then another time for one damage and two focus. And then at the end of Ulias's turn, the torch goes down. Oh! Oh, this escalated so quickly. I am in a tough spot, and I can't rest. So that's the thing is I can't rest down here because I'm alone in the room with the dungeon boss. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. Quite honestly, this is a, a bad, 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 bad situation. Because if I stay down here and I attack, if I get countered with anything meaningful or like a shield breaker, I'm pretty much, I'm dead. And then the game's lost. My safest play is to run out of the dungeon and rest. Oh, man, this is bad. Okay, one, two, three, four, and I have to rest. One, two, three, full up on focus. Okay, all right, now these guys activate. Pokey moves three, one, two, three, and then Stabby will move four. One, two, three, four. Oh, no, and then the dungeon boss moves one, but he gets to move and attack, and so I take one and two. Oh, Thornton is in such a bad spot down here. <laughs> and it's Uliessa's turn. And all Uliessa can do is rest. Because she was down. I mean, I didn't auto-lose. Oh, this is so... crummy. Okay. Oh, and that's it. I technically should have gone through that trap before... Oh, I forgot. Okay, too late to go back. All right, I have to deal with this trap. Because I can still move on my turn. Uh, four, five, six will take care of it. I'm already full up on focus, so that's one, two, three, four. And that way, maybe if, if Thornton survives and can get out of there, I may be able to move down and use spirit arrows and maybe save the game. Oh, dear. Okay, end of Elias's turn. Torch track goes down. We add another goblin. We have Boomy. Pops up in the entrance. Thornton's turn. Okay, so how best to play this? At the end of Thornton's turn, nothing is going to happen. Which is actually a really big thing because it means that none of the enemies are going to move. And I could come down. I have all the folks in the world. I could cast Spirit Arrows, deal damage directly to the dungeon boss, and potentially kill both goblins as long as I succeed. This could be my saving grace right here. So Thornton is not going to move. I'd love to fight the dungeon boss in its lair, but the situation has become uh, a bit dire. I can move in there after. I'm just going to attack. I should have enough health to not die. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, uh, that was not a good roll! That was not a good roll! I... Wow, and it rolled the torch! Holy buckets! Okay. Well, best I can do is spend two to make that a six. Because <laughs> I need four focus to do that. I don't have that. Uh, I do get two focus back. So it's going to be six, seven, eight, nine, ten from my set. So with seven, I deal three damage. One, two, three. That health token is now down as far as it can go because I can't enter that space until I perform the ritual. And instead of... Oh, this ruins everything. Instead of hitting me back, first it activates this, which temporal bump throws me to the entrance. Everybody within two. So if Uliessa was here, she'd be thrown to the entrance too. And 
then moves the torch down, which nothing happens, but at the end of stinking Thornton's turn... Oh, man! Wow! Okay. Well, it is what it is. Uh, I could still... No, I can't move, because technically by throwing me into the spot with uh, Boomy, it made me lose all my speed. Great. Goes down. We activate. So... Pokey is not within one, so it will move. Can move three. One, two, three. Into Ulias's space. Stabby cannot hit in the same space, so he'll move four, but into Ulias's space. Boomy is in my space, so he will deal me three damage. One, two, three. Bringing Thornton down to one health. And then Mind Flayer only has one movement, so it will move right here. And... Uh, it deals damage to everybody within four. One, two, three, four. So it doesn't hit Thornton, but it will deal one damage and two focus costs, two focus loss to Uliessa. Well, this is just a thing, isn't it? Okay. Uliessa's turn. Oh, we are so out of time. We are so out of time. Okay. It's just like last ditch trying to do whatever I can. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to cast Spirit Arrows. It'll deal max amount of damage to the Mind Flayer and kill both of those goblins, assuming I'm successful. Okay. Check a six. Let's get to a six. Come on. There it is. That's what I'm looking for. I get one focus back. Oh, man. I have rolled that torch so many stinking times. I won't have to deal with it because of the goblins, because I'll kill the goblins, but the Mind Flayer is still going to be alive, so I have to resolve it for that. Okay. So Spirit Arrows. Uh, I deal two damage to a single target, which I'm going to choose the Mind Flayer two damage and then I do one damage to everybody within one space of me which will deal the mind flayer one additional damage and will kill both of these guys um I don't want to use the flip but I get a loot a long sword of the lion oh it's super cool but I'm gonna keep my uh sun hammer and there I'm gonna grab the health one two three I do have to I forgot to spend the focus I spent five focus so I go down to one um, both of those guys go down, but then I have to deal with the Mind Flayer. The Mind Flayer first uses its torch ability to throw me back to the entrance, and then, um, moves the torch down, which causes enemies to activate, so that enemy will deal, because we're in the same space, one damage to both Thornton, who goes down, and Uliessa. And then at the end of Uliessa's turn, we go again. Deals one damage to Uliessa. Mind Flare moves one space. One, two, three, four. Doesn't quite hit. But the problem is now it's Thornton's turn. All he, all he can do is rest. He actually can rest because Uliessa's in his space, but then the torch goes out. We're forever lost in the dungeon. The Mind Flare defeated me. Oh, I got so close to. I was decked out. Wow, that, that game kind of had some crazy twists and turns. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Uh, go ahead, jump in the comments. Let me know what you thought of the play. Head over to the Kickstarter comments. Let's talk about this game. Um, you know, throw what you thought about this. What, what kind of loot did you like? Did you think I played strategically? Do you think I missed some things or messed up? What would you have done in these situations? Let us know. Uh, we are so happy with Tiny Epic Dungeons um, and, and how it's playing. So, uh Thank you so much for following along and for backing. I hope you all have a great day and game on.